And, and one of the greatest things for me is that uh, ADP required that a few of us, a handful of us, stay on for three years. And I was one of those people because, you know, before me, they were just selling kiosks to car dealers. After I got involved and did that first deal with cars.com, they never sold another kiosk to another car dealer again. So, of course, you know, I was the rainmaker for them. And, uh, and they had to stay on and I couldn't have been more pleased because you know our family dealership is gone and um, and I can't see very well but they value me and I'm able to do what I was doing so it seemed to be really a great deal for me I made some money on the transaction and I had uh, a commitment to stay with them for three years and I might have assumed that I would have been with them forever well I'd like to tell you that I was a model employee but uh, apparently I wasn't because they fired me after a year. <laughs> and let me tell you why they fired me. Because um, I had never worked for anybody other than my father uh, and this little startup company. And apparently somewhere along your career you get like a memo and the memo tells you that when you work in a big company, a big corporation, that very often you'll have to sit in meetings and listen to people say ridiculously dumb stuff and keep your mouth shut. And I'm sure you guys have seen that memo, right? I didn't see the memo. I didn't get that memo. So, you know, I'm kind of a guy who like says it as I see it, or don't see it as the case may be. But suffice it to say, I'm sitting in these meetings at ADP, listening to these, you know, senior corporate executives, you know, uh, talk about the car business and just absolutely get it wrong. So I would tell them, you know, that's really wrong. That's really a dumb idea. That isn't going to work. That's going to be a, a terrible disaster. And then worse yet, being blind, not being able to see the person who I'm criticizing, you know, very often it's a leader of the company. And about a year of that, they had enough of me. And uh, they showed me the door. And they did it very nicely, and they did it very respectfully. Uh, but they showed me the door, and on the way out the door, they handed me a check for the other two years of my contract that they weren't going to honor, or they were gonna, or weren't going to employ me, so they had to pay me out. Now, <clears throat> listen, you know, it's likely that somewhere along the line in our careers, you know, all of us may get sent home from time to time. And, and if you got sent home with two years' pay, uh, that would not necessarily be the worst day in your professional life. Uh, it might not be the best, but it wouldn't necessarily be the worst day with two years pay. And, and for me, it was the worst day. It was absolutely the worst day. Well, why was it the worst day for me? Because at that period of time, I had you know, been making a fair amount of money for fair period of time. I was living a pretty big lifestyle. I had a uh, pretty large home with a gigantic mortgage and I had three young kids who had not yet gone to college and uh, and I get sent home and now I'm unemployed. Now granted I had two years pay in my pocket uh, for being sent home but you gotta appreciate the fact that I'm a blind guy. I mean, I can't go out and get a job. I'm basically unemployable, right? I mean, I can't, if I had to, I couldn't, you know, wait a table. I couldn't drive a taxi. I mean, literally, there's nothing that I'm figuring out that I can do to support my family. And granted, I made a little bit of money on uh, selling that DMI company. I had two years pay, but it didn't take, you know, a lot of calculus to figure out that I don't have enough money to support myself and my family, you know, for the rest of our lives in any manner commensurate with the level of, of lifestyle that we had become accustomed to. So I'm in trouble and, and I'm in deep trouble. So, you know, my wife and my kids are looking at me like, what are you going to do? And I didn't know. I, di I didn't have a clue. And, and the more uh, you know, the more I thought about it, the more terrified I began. I became. I think it. Uh, I think it's a blow to anyone's ego and, and sense of self worth when they're fired. Um, and it's only happened to me once. But I think in the world that we live in today, it's more common than ever. So you know, like any other traumatic experience, I suspect there are uh, phases uh, that you go through. Um, uh, typically, you know, the, the denial, the anger, the, the uh, um, you know, the, the various stages. But, you know, for me, I just had to work through it. Um, and I felt, uh, you know, I felt a profound sense of worthlessness. I was scared, uh, but I knew I had to do something. And doing nothing was just simply not an option. So uh, I remember just really questioning myself and taking inventory of, 
uh, what I knew, what I didn't know, what I could do, what I couldn't do, what I have done, what I haven't done. And, you know, I thought about a lot of crazy stuff. I thought about trying to practice law. I thought maybe I would go down to the local courthouse and hawk people who had traffic tickets. I thought about, uh, you know, I thought about doing anything and everything. And, you know, when it really came down to it, taking inventory, what I realized that I knew the best was the used car business. And based on my prior experience of the past few years, um, I had a uh, understanding of basic technology. So it occurred to me that if I was able to put together the technology experience and the used car background, uh, that I ought to be able to uh, come up with something. And then I thought you know, long and hard about what is happening to the environment and put those three pieces together and just sort of had that aha moment.